Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, another interesting day to say the least. First up, banks are now asking if Bitcoin can help them stay relevant. And this is the same thing that we've been predicting on this channel for quite some time. The banks are starting to FOMO in because of all the different things that are happening in cryptocurrency and digital assets. And it really comes down to these three ladies. Also, we still don't have a president. And uh, if anything is a marker, History shows presidential elections often mark a turning point for Bitcoin. And if you're into Bitcoin, which I think you are, you're going to really like this article. Also, Alex Mashinsky has stolen the title from Charles Hoskinson as the CEO with the most amount of confidence ever in his project. And I'm going to show you why. But in all actuality, he's got a good reason to be. And finally, we'll round it all out with Q of the Day, where Medic asked a pretty good question about about the disappearing ink that we can use on the shield folio or stone book and how long it actually lasts. So we're getting all that, but first take a look at what's going on in the market. So a uh, little turbulence, a little uncertainty. I can only imagine why. Uh, it is Wednesday, November 4th, about 4 p.m. Texas time, and a lot of things are going on. And the big thing for me, uh, maybe for you too, is uh, Bitcoin is at 14,000. So congratulations. Uh, if you were holding this whole time, uh, you did it. Uh, you're at 14k and not too long ago i remember when it was uh just march uh, not too long ago it was below 4,000. so if you bought down then congratulations because you've got ice in your veins and you're reaping the rewards bitcoin is up two and a half percent for 24 hours and 2.6 for the week so not too shabby ethereum busts through the 400 mark and i can tell you i think i can only assume actually i can i can assume that ethereum will keep above this level but it seems to be a very uh, precarious situation that ethereum is in and it seems to kind of like bounce around but uh with the uh, newest addition to uh, paypal as they uh, roll out bitcoin bitcoin cash ethereum and litecoin uh this could uh, be a catalyst but uh, again who knows i'd like to see it stay above 400 but every time i say it it goes back down so i think i'm jinxing it Tether is uh, sitting around almost 17 billion market caps, so not too bad. Uh, XRP keeps steady, I suppose, around 23 cents. Bitcoin Cash is down, uh, weird. Chainlink is up uh, almost 2%, so it's almost $11. But um, I was hoping it would be on the move, but it's down 12% for the week, so that is never good news. Binance Coin also down, but she's 16% for the week. Uh, that's a big hit. Polkadot, still around four bucks, not too bad. Litecoin's up, great. Cardano, uh, up 2.8%, but again, it's still around that 10 cent mark. It really doesn't really go too far up or too far below, but uh, we will see. I mean, it's got a lot of great things happening. I mean, just yesterday they talked about how on their network, all the different stake pools now have more than uh, IOG. So that's good. It means it's more, or it is decentralized now because it's over 50%. As of Friday, it's gonna be 49.51. And on top of that, they have that uh, fantastic ERC20 uh, converter, which uh, if you are if you have any kind of project or any kind of coin that's uh, ERC20, you can just transfer it over right to the Cardano network. So that to me is huge, but uh, we'll see how it all works out. USD coins, stable coin, no one cares. And let's see what else. Wrap, yeah, wrap Bitcoin, same thing. Tezos, 1.4, great. Uh, OKB, yeah, sure. And then uh, anything big down here? Of course it's big. It's Celsius network. Up 14 and a half percent, man. I gotta tell you, I picked. Uh, I, I can pick them. So Celsius Network. Not that uh, I'm kind of bummed out because I was really ramping up my uh, my my DCA. I, I still put money in. I'm glad I put it in. You know, uh, the last week every day. So I'm pretty happy about that. But kind of open to accumulate a little bit more. But uh, hey, here we are. But it's up 14 and a half and 22 for the week. So uh, if you're holding Celsius, which I know a lot of you are, congratulations. And I can only tell you, I'm thinking it's going to go much higher. And I'm explain why in a little bit. But let's break into today's top story. So first up, if banks aren't completely 100% FOMOing in, uh, they're getting ready to because they're asking questions uh, on a whole nother level, which two or three years ago would have seemed ridiculous. Uh, but here we are. It's amazing how fast cryptocurrency moves. We've got the old style bankers in their old world asking people who are in this space going, hey, how do we stay relevant? Swear that's what they're saying. Can we stay relevant in this in this day and age? And, uh, it's, and that question is being asked uh, by Avanti. It's also being asked by Kraken, the bank that uh, both of those are, are now special depositories in Wyoming. And it's only going to get worse for them. So, And even if those CBDCs come into play and we have the central banks who are just issuing uh, you know, our, the CBDCs directly to the consumers or to the citizens, uh, there is no, no real reason 
uh, for a commercial bank other than just to be a, a node uh, because you're not going to be uh, hanging around and giving out money. That's not your, your main purpose anymore. So I'm not going to get ahead of myself. So this was pretty interesting and just kind of what I thought was going on. So a pair of investment strategists say banks are now taking a close look at whether Bitcoin can help them stay relevant. In a new interview on the Unchained podcast, CoinShares chief strategy officer Meltem Demirs says she's now fielding crypto questions from banking execs on a regular basis. So it was uh, hosted by Laura Shin. She is a pretty great journalist. I always recommend checking out her channel. Got a lot of great guests. Uh, Meltem here, uh, Demirs, hope I said her name right. So, uh, Chief Strategy Officer of CoinShares, then Lynn Alden. She's the founder of uh, Investment Strategy at Lynn Alden Group. So they've got a couple of great stories and it's uh, it's about an hour and a half long. If you want to listen to it, sure, that's great, but I'm just gonna give you the highlights. So to quote uh, Meltem Demirs, she states, We've been talking to banks and asset managers who are asking, what do we do? Is Bitcoin maybe part of the answer to how we stay relevant? How do we keep AUM or assets under management and actually deliver a product that our clients will pay for? And she's like, it's not rocket science. Just give them what they want. I mean, just don't be stupid. Just say, yes, we will uh, do cryptocurrency digital assets. I mean, I think that's that's one of the problems with uh, a lot of uh, industries or businesses out there or even YouTube channels, I'll be honest with you, because people always think, oh, I know what they want. You don't know what people want. You just got to ask them. That's why, like, I mean, j just for example, in, in this channel, I'm always pretty active in the comments section. So when people say, Hey Rob, that was stupid. I don't do those things again. I mean, if I don't, if it's just one person, I'm like, well, maybe. But if I keep hearing again and again and again, then I stop doing that because that's not what people want. So it's the same thing with the banks right now. Just all they have to do is take a look at PayPal. When PayPal opened up everything, they said, hey, we're gonna offer crypto and digital assets. Do you guys want something? Well, they had a 3x demand from their wait list and they said, wow, this is way bigger than we thought. So instead of just having $10,000 per day, we're going to up it to 15000 and then we're going to roll it out even faster. So they have the pulse on what people want. Banks, again, are not good at innovation. So that's going to take a little bit of time. But the time that it takes for them to catch up, I think that everything's going to get passing them by and they're going to get blockbustered. Anyhow, Lynn Alden, founder of Lynn Alden Strategy, says she's having similar conversations, which is odd because, I mean, they're all talking to these banks and they're all saying the same things to them. She states, uh, for example, the other day I gave a presentation to a bank board of directors and Bitcoin wasn't one of my kind of presentation points. I was just talking about fiscal monetary policy. And, and then one of the first things they asked when I was done was, what do I think about Bitcoin? So she goes over all this, uh, you know, fiscal policy, pretty dry, pretty uh, nice and uh, individualized language for for the banks. She's like, hey, that was great. Well, what about Bitcoin? And uh, and the reason uh, or part of the reason why these banks are all ask actually asking about it is because she says right here, because they had noticed, for example, the Michael Saylor investment. And of course, that is the whole micro strategy thing. And she goes into the whole story. But I have to I, I, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I mean, it's very simple. I mean, if you're a bank, and you're like, hmm, how can we make money? Or if you're a corporation, how can we make more money? Well, it's pretty simple. Just take a look at what Michael Saylor did with micro strategy. And uh, they plumped down 425 million about a couple months ago and now it's worth 537 million so uh, again not rocket science so if you put money into an asset that is climbing up and has a tremendous upside as opposed to any type of stock or bond or or any kind of uh, gold or precious metals right now i don't see i don't see gold or silver going up 10x in the next year or so but i do see bitcoin doing that uh this is an asymmetrical investment and of course banks are gonna look at that and go wow people want this uh we can offer it to them and also it's the price is going through the roof uh, because it is so valuable i mean it's again not brain surgery and then finish up she says uh so the board's like so how real is this is this like still an asset class for the crazies or is it, you know, an actual thing? And that's how they phrase it still to this day. Uh, or is it an actual like, do you treat it like a commodity? Do you treat it like a currency? So she says, I gave my five minute uh, bullish overview for Bitcoin, which is why I'm always ta talking about the uh, Bitcoin elevator pitch. Uh, check out that video. It's very simple. All you got to say is, look, Bitcoin is digital gold. Unlike gold, it is finite at 21 million, whereas with gold, you're going to keep buying that stuff. It, uh, it is the best performing asset class ever. Uh, it used to cost a uh, nickel, and now it's cost about $14,000. And it's why I'm heavily invested, not to mention the fact that I can send it to anyone, anywhere in the world, in less than 30 minutes. That's my elevator pitch. And uh, if you can just give them something like that, I mean, to your friends and family, pretty simple. I'm sure she had to go a little bit more deeper than that. But let me know what you think in the comments section. But again, um, 
I think the banks are going to be left behind. They're not very nimble. They can't pivot and move and do things that a small company can. And they're just out of, they're just out of it. Uh, that's just how it is. Now, nothing wrong with the bank employees. I mean, a lot, I, I got a lot of people listening to this channel who work for the bank. It's not you. It's just the upper management is holding everything back. And I think you can agree with me. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up. Well, we're still waiting for uh, this uh, presidential election to go through. So we don't know who's going to win. And volatility is great for you traders. But also volatility and uncertainty is great for us because people like to invest into something uh, that is not a quantitative easing, that is a quantitative hardening, that is has has an assurance and only locked in at 21 million or whatever the market cap or, or whatever the uh, total supply actually is. So right now, <laughs> enjoy it because it's great for us. So this is a little piece where it talks about how presidential elections mark a turning point for Bitcoin. And if you've already, and first part's pretty boring, so I'm gonna skip that. Anyhow, it talks about elections typically mark a pivoting point for Bitcoin. And it states, uh, Masari analyst, Masari is a data analytics company. Ryan Watkins explained that presidential elections in the U.S. have typically taken place at the start of all past bull runs. But you have to remember, uh, presidential elections happen how often? Every four years. And how often is there a halving? Every four years. So it's kind of like the chicken or the egg type of thing. I kind of think there is something to be said about that they're both kind of in that same time point. So uh, we'll see. But he states, not a lot of people know this, but U.S. presidential elections are a leading indicator of Bitcoin bull runs. The 2008 election was a strong catalyst as it caused the launch of Bitcoin just two months later. The results speak for themselves. And so Obama was elected in 2008. And then in 2012, around uh, towards the later part there, he was reelected. And then after that, he just saw a huge spike again. Also, the happening probably had a little bit to do with that. And then we had a little bit of a slump right around there for 2015, 16, where I have to tell you, I feel like this is 2016. This 2020 feels like that's what it is because it's kind of like a lull and we're starting to kind of slowly take off. And I kind of feel it's what it is on top of the fact that we have a presidential election. Same type of thing. So this was when Trump was elected in 2016. And then in 2017, December, just about a year and a half later, or roughly, we saw the massive parabolic bull run. So here we are over here, same type of thing. Everything's playing out perfectly. We have a lot of confusion, a lot of uncertainty. So I can only see these things going up. I could be wrong, but uh, that's how I see it. Anyhow, Watkins believes that reduced economic uncertainty provides fertile ground for Bitcoin to grow up. The reduced uncertainty follows elections, provides fertile ground for Bitcoin bull runs. And he states presidential elections are greater than halvings. So slow your roll. I don't think it's that big of a thing. I mean, it is great to have uncertainty, but there's something to be said when you cut the production costs in half and all of a sudden you're like, wait, wait, wait. You're telling me that it used to be 12 and a half Bitcoins uh, every 10 minutes that the miners would produce. Now it's only 6.25. Then in former years, it's going to be 3.175, whatever it is. So, I mean, you have to look at that and go, that's a big thing as far as the, the finite supply. So again, to reiterate, from here on out, I think we're going to see it's still going to be turbulent. We're still going to have ups and downs, peaks and valleys. But 2021 is our year. I say it in every single video. Let me just think in the comments section. Let's move on. So next up, and this is a quick piece. Uh, if you don't follow, follow Alex Mashinsky on Twitter, what are you doing? This guy's gold. I mean, he's got so many, he's got so many good pieces and just just rails on the banks and just rails on these these uh, different projects and just really he's an entertaining guy. But he's got a great product. And if you don't know, I'm a big believer in Celsius and uh, it's where I store 30% of my entire portfolio on the Celsius platform. So uh, the, the the lion's share, of course, in a ledger, which I kind of feels like my vault, but uh, Celsius has a big chunk. And I believe in, I think I, I think it's gonna do, do good things just like we saw with the price of the Celsius tokens. But why is that? Well, it could be because 98% of their employees have committed to a three-year lock on their dollar fifty, they're going to lock it up. A dollar fifty of all their sell tokens that they have accumulated. So all their employees go. You know what? We believe in it so much that we're going to have you lock it up for three years, so we can't touch it. And of course, what happens when those go out of circulation? More demand potentially. It looks like that's what's going on. And then also the price goes up. So uh, that is just one of the things that is going on on top of the fact that they do so many loans. And of course, I am not oblivious to the elephant in the room or excuse me, the rhino pooping all over the place uh, for this little piece here. I just thought it was hilarious uh, to put it in. And 
That's that is the beauty of cryptocurrency, digital assets, and especially on social media. You got, you got a great point, and you got someone just posting just insanity. So anyway, on top of that, I mean, if you just want to follow Alex and just uh, see what he's talking about, there's a lot of good things about what well, he talks about the Celsius flywheel and how it correlates to the actual price because you can get paid in Celsius outside of the United States because I have been putting uh, a lot of my assets into Celsius. Unfortunately, if you're an American citizen, you cannot earn in Celsius, which is a bummer. However, they do have great rates. And uh, whatever you are into, that's fine. But uh, Celsius is for me. I just like it. And there was this little piece here I thought was pretty interesting from Crypto Knight Rider says, and if you invested your $1,200 stimulus check on April 13th, purchasing 15,000 sell tokens, it would now be worth 21,000. That was on November 1st. And it's gone up another 26% or 13% or whatever it was. So just food for thought. And then also Alex is going to talk about uh, DeFi and how uh, Celsius has outperformed all the DeFi projects. So uh, I'll let you look into it. Anyhow, at Mashinsky, uh, follow them pretty good interesting stuff so that is it for for this piece let's jump into q of the day so q of the day comes to us from my man medic i do like medic he's kind of like me yeah he was a medic obviously i was the same thing we both got gray in our beards and that's just how it is but um he has a good point here and i had talked about this in another video but i want to make it crystal clear is that he says hey dan well yet another safe gimmick and he's talking about the ink that is uh, uh, being produced by this ghost pen. So let's jump in the office. This was pre-recorded a while ago, but uh, I think it's good to note right now. So let's jump in and- hey, Welcome uh, back to uh, Q of the day. And actually it's it, it's not so much really a question, but it is a comment and it's a pretty good one. So uh, this was actually after we did a video and we talked about the stone book or the shield folio. And uh, you know, I like it, I like to use it. Uh, it seems to save me a lot of heartache because I don't want to lose all my cryptocurrency. There's a lot of different things out there, but uh, it's a low-tech option. I like it. So this is from my man, uh, Medic, RVN Medic. And uh, I, 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 like, I like this guy because he does. Uh, he's just like, like I am. He's an, he's an old medic and got a lot of good things to say. So Medic, thanks so much for this comment. It really put things into, uh, into light. And he states, he goes, yet another safe gimmick. Does the manufacturer <laughs> have an estimate of the like expectancy of the disappearing ink? It might be gone in one year. Who knows? Um, and before we move on, what he's talking about is that, uh, the shield folio product is, it's just a, it's a lightweight pocketbook that is tear resistant, tear resistant, water resistant, tamper resistant. And you put in all, all your seed phrases and mnemonic phrases and passwords. And, uh, it has two forms you can do it in. You can write on it. And then also there's this thing called a ghost pen, which has a specialty ink, which when you run it under black light, you can see the actual thing that you're writing on. So that's exactly what he is. And he has a good point here, which is, Hey, how do we know this won't just disappear in like six months, a year, two years? So it, it is a good point. And then he says, I hope you got this uh, gratis or free to test, but it seems every time a safe law comes out, you have one. Uh, medic, that is true. Uh, people send me stuff all the time. And uh, I, I got to tell you, I, I show you guys a quarter of what I get actually get sent. He says, I'll pass on this one, just like the money I spent on a Ledger Nano. I said, well, Medic, where do you, where do you uh, store your, your passwords? And he says, hey, uh, in our in our home safe on a seed card, so it comes down to this: everybody's different, and they have their own little styles of way to do things. Medic has a rock solid way to do it. You know, he's got a seed card he puts in his in his uh, safe, and that's good. Some people do something else, but this is what I do, and maybe this is for you. So I reached out to uh, the founder and CEO of uh, Shield Folio or Stonebook, and I asked him that question, and he is on today. Freddie, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. How's it going? Glad to be here. Uh, hey, everyone. <laughs> Great. All right, Freddie. So that's the question. Um, we have this ink. We have to trust it. How long is it going to last? And how is the whole process? How did you test it all out? So walk us through. Okay. So the ink is is a UV ink, transparent ink, a fluorescent ink. Um, it has built in it. It's permanent. It's waterproof. And it has a super glue uh, solution in it that binds to the stone paper to make sure it actually could last a lifetime, super, not multiple super, lifetimes. A super, super glue, glue. Like, like ape strength ape. style? Yeah, like ape strength style. <laughs> it's, <laughs> gotcha. it's, it's one of the strongest glue out there. So it's, uh, it's, it doesn't come off. It's waterproof. Um, it's something that's not out there in the market. It's like possibly the strongest invisible ink you could find. Um, and it works perfect with the stone book. Great. Now, now you were talking about... Oh, sorry. Yeah. 
uh, you were talking about working with, with a chemist before when we talked, because that was the big thing. So how did that all come yes. about? Uh, we were just working with the chemist, uh, trying to get the solution right, making sure the ink doesn't dry out uh, after a certain amount of time because we're using super glue. And we actually came up with this super strength solution. And it's, like I said, the strongest, I believe the strongest out there and then right you, now. That's, you know. Gotcha. And you said that you were doing, you were testing it against permanent ink, like black marker ink, and you would rub it with what kind of solution to, to wipe it off? Uh, with an alcohol wipe. So I was rubbing it off and you could actually wipe off the Sharpie permanent marker uh, black ink more. Actually, you could wipe most of it off compared to the ghost ink inside the ghost pen. So that's how strong this, because uh, it has that glue solution inside it, it really doesn't rub off. Okay. Um, and it stays fluorescent. I mean, like I said, for a, li for a lifetime. Awesome. Yeah, because that, that's the big thing. If it can last, <laughs> I mean, everybody's, we'd like to use it. So uh, I am right. I'm still old school. I'll, I'll do it. I played around with it. It was like James Bondish. Very cool. But uh, yeah, okay, I, I cool. like it. So I see it. But there was another technique that you were talking about and I had never heard before. So tell us about this. This uh, What was it called? Squirly? It's called, uh, I think it's called squirling with your wallet. Squirling. So what it is, is uh, you actually have like in the notebook, if you use this, uh, the stone book, for instance, you can actually write uh, the real mnemonic phrase, the high valued wallet mnemonic phrase with the ghost pen inside, um, you know, inside the page, right? So, and what you do is in front of it, since you can't see the invisible ink, you write uh, not a fake wallet, but a low value wallet, you know, something with like 30 bucks on it. Okay, okay. So that way okay. you write it with a ballpoint pen that's noticeable, that's seen. So that way if somebody steals your book, they can actually, the first thing they're going to do is unload that wallet. And that's going to uh, uh, send you a notification if you sign up for notifications with Etherscans, create an account, and you could attach the address to get notifications there anytime a transaction goes in or out. So right away, once you get that transaction, um, once, once a transaction goes through, you know somebody grabbed your notebook. Because that's probably the first thing they're going to do. So, I got if you. you have a second notebook, go out there and unload that really valuable crypto <laughs> that you have. So, yeah. Yeah. So, when, when I was wrapping my head around, I go, I've never heard of that technique. I mean, for safety, it makes a lot of sense. So, on the one page, we're going to write an ink, regular ink, the one of the wallets that you have, a low value wallet, maybe with, yes. you know, $30 worth of tomato coin or whatever it is. Right? Yeah. And then on the back page, you're going to write in the ghost ink, which is the one we we're just talking about with the grill. And then of course people see that if they ever take your wallet and they actually know what the heck is going on, they're going to say, Oh, right. okay. So this is it. They're going to, uh, um, get that wallet. They're going to download it and like, okay. And that's it. You're saying we do something like that. And then we actually on my ether scan, is it my ether scan? Is that what you said? Ether scan. Well, sorry. It's yeah, ether scan.io. Is gonna, we can actually put um, the uh, wallet ID in there and track it, and, and we can see all the transactions. Wallet right. address. So here's what I'm going to I'm going to show you something right here. So okay. this is uh, it's just a quick example, but like let's say it's filled up with the whole mnemonic phrase, yeah. but in the back you're able, I don't know if you can see, you're able to write behind it. Ah, that's crazy. So that's where you store the real uh, high value, you know, Ethereum wallet. Or, you know, whatever wallet you want to hide. And, um, and on the front, it's yeah. just a decoy. And that's yeah. what, yeah, because someone in the, in the comment section, I'm glad I actually read the comments. Uh, they said, hey, <laughs> I've, got, I've got two books. One I keep at home for it because I want to do these things. But if that one gets destroyed, lost, stolen, or something like that, I have a second one at my bank in my safety deposit box. And I was like, oh, that's a pretty good idea. That's why I actually ordered the good. second one from you. So, okay, I get it. So walk us, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share my screen so people know what the heck we're talking about. Walk us Got through it. the whole Etherscan thing. So let me share my screen. Okay. So, my man, here we are. So we're on Etherscan, and you have to have an account. If you don't have an account, just click right there for sign in. It'll ask you, you know, hey, do you want to create an account? You sign up. I've already signed up. I'm going to log in. Yes. Okay. Hey, there I am. Dan Digital Asset News at Gmail. Okay. <laughs> Freddie, walk us through. What the heck are we doing? You're going to go to address watch list. It's in the middle. You're going to click the magnifying glass. Yeah. Got it. And then from there, you're going to add your wallet. And that's going to be the decoy wallet that's written with the normal ballpoint pen that's going to be seen. So you're okay. going to add that address in there. 
Got it. So just so, so what I'm going to do to show you, like here is my, this is my Brave browser wallet. I've got a, a pretty hefty amount almost. So what I'm going to need <laughs> to do is find, this is the address that you want, right? So I'm going to copy okay. this to the clipboard. Yeah. And and for you watching uh, the video, this is whatever your, your address is. He's going to put it right there. Okay. And then description, I'm just going to put Brave browser. Whoops. Walletto. Okay, and then for here, you're going to go ahead and click notify incoming actions. Okay, and that's oh, wait, it's it's the one on top of it actually, so you can get yeah. Oh, incoming outgoing. Okay. Yeah, and then also track. Also track. Yeah. Okay. And then continue, and the alerts will come through your email, so Perfect. you successfully added that to your watch list. So anytime there's a transaction, mm -hmm. you know, if you lose your notebook, you know, if somebody's actually got your crypto. Um, you'll get, hey, this got sent out. And uh, that's where, that's the address you use, the decoy address. Behind that actual decoy address, you, you're you writing down in the page with the ghost pen. So you get a tip to have out there just to stay secure. So if uh, you watch this, just know that you can go right to shieldfolio.com and find it, or you can, what I always do, is I, sometimes I forget, I, I put in stone book and cryptocurrency. However, if you go in the description, you can get 15 of every one of my videos. It'll look something like this. And then when you click on that link, it'll give you 15% off. All right. Well, Freddie, we really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Product is great. And uh, yeah, so thanks so much. And uh, that is it for tonight. Thanks. Thanks again for uh, being on the show. And uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right. I'll cool. see you. All right. That's it. So thanks for sticking with me through the whole thing. Um, again, you can find uh, the link in the description below, along with many others. If you're uh, interested in those types of things, I, again, I've got a couple of those books, so uh, I totally uh, believe in them. Also, if you don't know, I have a second channel. And the reason I, I created Dan Clips was for two reasons. One is because some of I talk a little bit too much. So I like to break things down into clips so you can just see like little six minute, seven minute clips instead of going through the whole 30 minutes to find what you're looking for. Second reason was it's like a backup channel because YouTube at any time can just go, you know what, Dan, we don't like your channel, get out. And uh, they could shut me down. So have to have some kind of backup and this is one of them on top of, the, of my Theta channel, which I really need to get back into. We just came over from El Paso to Houston. We're gonna be in Houston for the next three to four weeks, and I'll go back. So a lot of things going on, but uh, that is it. So uh, again, thanks for sticking with me. Really appreciate it, and uh, I will uh, see you on the next one. Dot dot.